right, 22 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I grew up on Long Island, Robin, and I used to ride my bicycle to a mall. It was called Roosevelt Field Mall. And I had a favorite record store there and the other things that a teenager would like. And one day in school, um, we were learning about uh, Charles Lindbergh. And the teacher said, do any of you know where Charles Lindbergh took off from? Uh, No, I don't don't know where he took off from. He took off from Roosevelt Field. And so uh, years later, and after I was uh, an adult and didn't really go there much, I went back to visit, and I said, you know, Charles Lindbergh took off from here. And, and I, I saw that they put a plaque up there. I swear they did not have a plaque when I was a kid. Oh, my god! I'm gosh. glad somebody had the wisdom to say, you know, this is a pretty important place. We shouldn't mm-hmm. have even built the mall here, probably. <laughs> but as long as the mall is here, we should at least put a plaque up there. And then when you go to the Smithsonian, if you see the, uh, the, air, the flight museum, when you go down to the Kennedy Space Center, um, it's it's just amazing. And I took you to the airport, and I watched the airplanes fly, and I said, how is it possible that big, gigantic <laughs> things can actually f- look like they're floating? Exactly. Next they year, float. there was a story next year, uh, Elon Musk has this, I guess he's got two rich people, he's going to fly up to the moon and back, right? Mm-hmm. They're not getting out, I don't think, not this time. Um, it is a fascinating topic for me. And there couldn't be a better person to write about this than Julianne Guthrie. She's on the phone. She wrote a book called How to Make a Spaceship. This is a good book. Uh, Julian is a journalist, and I, I can figure that out. That, that journalism background she had helped with this book for sure. Julian, what an honor. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. You know, it's great to hear your story. As you know, Peter Diamandis, is, uh, I guess, was uh, maybe a neighbor. He grew up in uh, Great Neck. I didn't so know. he I was didn't close, know. and he was exploding a bunch of yeah. He was uh, he was you know uh, making his homemade rockets and all sorts of explosives that he uh, utilized. Maybe not far from where you were, but it's a great story from um, obviously from Charles Lindbergh and that legacy to what we're seeing today. And it was really a key part of this story: the inspiration of Charles Lindbergh and those aviation milestones, Tell and me. using an incentive competition to galvanize uh, something thoroughly modern uh, space travel yeah who was the who did who presented the incentive who did that so that was so Peter Diamandis at the heart of the story okay. the main character okay. he was the boy who he was eight years old when um, Apollo 11 lands on the moon in July 1969 and he dreams of getting to space does everything to get to space goes to MIT and Harvard and launches all these space clubs and organizations and anyway it's when he's reading Lindbergh's The Spirit of St. Louis when he realizes Lindbergh flew in 1927 to win a $25,000 prize not as a stunt so Peter this quintessential space geek is like wow what if I could launch an incentive competition dangle a lot of money out there to try to get people to create an industry that didn't exist or at least do something that others said was impossible which is build and fly a manned rocket to the start of space twice within two weeks if they can do that if they're not a part of any governmental program i give them ten million dollars no. so it's this oh, whole wow. entrepreneurial adventure story and how did he wow. benefit from it or was it just a fascination for him oh it was an obsession it was beyond fascination for sure it was wow. this boy's dream and that he would never give up on and so he lands on this idea of an incentive competition he called the x prize it was the first x prize today it's a global foundation based in la uh, but it started to you know jump start an industry that didn't exist basically it started because he wanted to one day get to space he wanted to create a private path to space and so, you know, he opened it up to anyone, non-governmental. So you've got all of these mavericks, all of these outliers, you know, people in Romania and, and in all across the globe, all across the United States and different teams who were risking, you know, lives and reputations to build the world's first private spaceship. Wow, it's a fascinating story. Uh, um, <laughs> we recently saw that movie, um, Hidden Figures, with the three ladies uh, who contributed yes, to, yes. to NASA. And the one thing that, uh, well, in addition to the social aspect of that movie, but math, the mathematical part of, mm-hmm. uh, of a space launch was so made obvious in that movie that that's got, I mean, the people who invent these things have to be math geniuses, or at least have a math genius that is their good friend or something. Exactly. <laughs> right? I mean, isn't that part of it? It's, it's amazing how, how that plays a role in all of this. 
It's true. Well, well, what it is, I mean, you know, what Peter was trying to do is you go suborbital first. So that's, you go out of the Earth's atmosphere, but you go 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles up, and it's not going into orbit, like what um, Apollo 11 did or what Elon Musk is doing, and eventually Jeff Bezos, the Amazon founder, will do. So he wanted, this was a stepping stone to go even farther into space. And... Um, what's required there is a combination of things. You know, um, Bert Rattan in the Mojave Desert dreamed up, you know, this this seemingly, this improbable um, design. And it's, to- it's really fascinating, um, the design of Spaceship One and what he called the feather. And it was this mechanism for getting the spaceship and his pilot, who happened to be his best friend, back to the earth back to earth safely and you know here's this guy working with fewer than 30 people in the mojave desert who you know dreams up comes up with this um engineering breakthrough other people said was was never going to work and he trusted his instinct so you need you need that you need the bravery of the test pilots um you need someone like peter diamandis who was like the conductor of a great orchestra to make all of this happen and it was this, you know, magical time that came together and made history in the Mojave Desert. And uh, that's like Chuck Yeager all those decades ago. I mean, you, he really pushed the envelope with his flights. Exactly. And it, it happened, you know, Chuck Yeager did it at Edwards Air Force Base, which is 20, 20 miles away from where this took place. It's kind of, you know, this this... Badlands area, this Mojave Desert, where there's very little regulation, where you can take the risks that were needed uh, to make this happen, and also, you know, risks that are needed to move society forward. And so it all played out there, actually, 13 years ago this month in Mojave. And but it was this long journey, and I think that the story is really for anybody who, mm-hmm. whether or not you're a space geek doesn't matter but you have a big dream this you know moonshot I love it yeah um, they, they, it's a fabulous story those guys Wonderful. those guys have to be sick when they see people spending money on hydrogen bombs the, what you, all the good you could do with that much money and that would benefit mankind uh, Julian thank you for being on the show the book is mm-hmm. called How to Make a Spaceship I found that on Amazon it's got rave reviews and we're up against the clock Julian real quickly is uh, your website Julian Guthrie's F dot com is that right Yes, real quick, we're running a campaign on Facebook. We want to give you copies of the book personally signed by Richard Branson. So Richard Branson, go to Facebook, search for How to Make a Spaceship Book, and uh, upload your own moonshot, and uh, we, we hope to send you some personally signed books. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, nice. Go there. Yeah. Well, that's so a... So I hope that, the, that Robin and Larry, that you will do this. You should share your moonshots and, and hopefully get copy of, I mean, we're, Richard Branson, Peter Diamandis, these are some of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time, and they're going to sign copies of the book, so it's wow. pretty neat. That is awesome. T- tell me the Facebook page again. <laughs> you broke up a little bit. It's How to Make a Spaceship Book page, so you just go, okay. To, okay. go to Facebook and then type in How to Make a Spaceship Book, it's the official page, and we're doing that, and then we also have a website, howtomakeaspaceship.com, but to enter the campaign on facebook very easy to do just go there search or reach out to me at on twitter at julian guthrie julian thank you so much uh what an honor to have you on our show thank you for the great interview much appreciated all right we will be right back Hi, my name is Erica Olstein. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine. So, you used to be wired, now you're just tired. You used to be thin, but now you're the heaviest you've ever been. You don't necessarily always have to take a med if your thyroid is playing dead. If you have a thyroid disorder, an acupuncture visit may be in order. 